doing battle on this tonight. It's former Conservative MP and current UKIP leader Neil Hamilton and human rights lawyer Shoaib Khan. Neil, thank you very much for joining us as well as you, Shoaib. Of course, Neil, how are the refugees affording £7,000 trips to Britain when they're supposed to be quite poor, aren't they? Well, this is a racket, isn't it? Overwhelmingly, these people are economic migrants, not genuine refugees from persecution, whether it's political, racial or, or whatever. And uh, as you say, uh, the fact that they can afford to pay these outrageous sums for this trip across the Channel, I think is a pointer to the reality here. You know, 98% of the people who arrive on these boats have destroyed their documentation identifying their nationality and where they've come from. You know, 70% of them are adult males between 18 and 39 years old. Uh, and 83% uh, of them immediately make asylum claims. So, you know, the numbers are now really out of control. Because okay. since 2018, uh, you know, we had 140,000 illegal migrants that were detected. Of course, there are masses that are not detected, but 140,000. And last year, there was 52,000 in one year alone. And we've had 10,000 already in the run up to this year when the weather has been awful in the channel. So, you know, we've got to put a stop to this because it yeah. undermines the entire system of migration control. And it's very unfair to the genuine refugees, of course, who okay. are the real victims. I'll come back to you. I'll, I'll come back to you because I want to bring Shobe in. And Shobe, are you really going to look the nation in the eye now and tell them that someone who's just paid £7,000 to get a nifty speedboat across the channel is the victim of modern slavery or deserves a lot of sympathy? Um, I just don't understand, I mean, the, the premise of this question. And when you started off saying, you know, refugees are supposed to be poor. Why? Mm. Who said that? That's the whole point. They're not economic migrants. They're not coming to earn. They're not coming here because they don't have food to eat. They're coming here because they're being persecuted. I mean, what we saw in Ukraine, millionaires and someone and homeless people were treated the same. What we saw in Afghanistan, you could be, kings have been asylum seekers. But if you've got £7,000, show it. Sure, but if you've got £7,000, OK, you can probably put down the deposit for at least a couple months' rent in a very safe country like France, where they're coming from. So, realistically, why on earth should we have too much sympathy if they're coming over here and want to coin off the British taxpayer show? Because that's nothing to do with it. That's the whole point. They have the money. So many of them are professionals. There's journalists, there's academics, there's TV presenters. I mean, all sorts of people are refugees. They're sports people, and that's the whole point. Um, that they're not coming here because they want money and they have no food to eat. Um, they're coming here to save their lives. Now, for a Tory, that might be impossible to understand. You know, you would only spend thousands of pounds if you're going to get thousands of pounds back. For any other person... I don't think that's fair. Pounds, I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't think that's, that's, that's fair, because the key point of difference there would surely be that if you've got that amount of money and you are choosing to use that amount of money to come to Britain, that, yeah. Neil, I would argue, would definitely make you an economic migrant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. what we have to ask ourselves about these people is why have they not claimed asylum in the first country that they came to inside the European Union? You know, most of these people are entering the European Union either uh, at the Greek border or and come through the Balkans, or maybe a few of them come uh, via Italy from North Africa, and they come through several other European countries, which are perfectly safe, including Albania, where, of course, you know, tens of thousands of, of, of bogus asylum seekers have tried to get into this country in recent years. Why have they not claimed uh, asylum in those countries rather than making all their way all the way to the channel in order to try and get into Britain? The, you know, the international law says that you have to claim asylum in the very first safe country right. to which you come. And that isn't happening here. So this is a racket, pure and simple. And people like Mr. Khan are the accomplices of the people smugglers and the gangs who then, of course, very often keep these people in a kind of modern slavery, forcing them to work in illegal activities when they do get into this country to repay the costs of their journey, because a lot of them are not paying up front. They're right. actually uh, g uh, taking on responsibilities to pay afterwards. Well, I'll let you come back to that show. Neil there has basically said that you are in some way an accomplice to the people who are coming across the channel. Your views on that? Um, I don't think that's really worthy of comment. I mean, I'm a lawyer. I'm a member of a very respectable profession in the UK. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I'm not really going to uh, dignify them. You're facilitating them. Um, but, but what I'm going to say, firstly, what he says about the law is incorrect, and that's the whole point. It's a myth. 
that there's a legal obligation to claim asylum in the first country? Mm. It clearly is not. So that's one thing. That's just what the law doesn't say. I get so that. I, I, I do. I do get that. Can I can I ask you this? Is why should the British taxpayer, for many of whom many people watching this now will not have seven thousand pounds in their savings? Okay, that is a lot of money. Why should the British taxpayer pay for people who've just forked out seven grand to get a speedboat across the channel to stay free at the taxpayer's expense in this country in a hotel with bed and board and then probably in some kind of council house as well and have the kids educated, etc. Could you just explain to the British taxpayer why they should do that? Because it just shows the exact opposite of Mr Hamilton is saying and the others are saying. It exactly shows that they are genuine refugees trying to save their life and not economic migrants. And that's the whole point, that they have the money, they have the resources, but they just need a safe place. And no one's coming here for the hotels we put them up in. No one's coming here for the forty pounds a week we give them. No one's coming here. Uh, I, I mean, for these things, and that's just such such a myth. And that's the thing. I mean, another thing about why do they all come here? They don't. A very tiny minority come here. Most Afghans did go to Pakistan. Most uh, people do seek asylum in their closest countries. Most Ukrainians would have gone to neighboring safe countries. It's a small minority that comes to the UK, and just like any country, we need to take our share. Neil, one more from you, Gorm. There are 52,000 of these illegal migrants who paddled across the Channel last year. Their lives are not at risk in France, which is the country from which they're coming to the United Kingdom. Why don't they make their asylum claim in France? Well, I tell you why. Because in France, 25% of these asylum claims, because they're bogus, are rejected. But unfortunately, because we no longer have a home office which is fit for purpose, 72% of their claims in Britain are granted. So, of course, this is a great pull factor for migrants uh, who don't have a, a right to claim asylum, but they think that the British system can be gamed, whereas the French system is more difficult. And so we should wise up. In, you know, there are right. plenty of lefty lawyers who are making lots of money out of asylum claims, and it's a massive business. This is costing us billions, taxpayers of this country, billions okay. of pounds a year, which could be better spent on the health service and many other good things. You know, it's a racket and it's got to be stopped. Show, can I ask you, in your esteemed legal view, OK, is it legally possible for somebody to be classed as an economic migrant if they come across the channel? Because I wonder whether or not you're hiding behind that a little bit. And actually, the reality is that if they've just come on a small boat, they can't legally be classed as an economic migrant, which is why you can say now on national television that they're not. Um, well, I'm, I'm not sure no what you legal, mean, but that's there's another no legal thing. definition. Oh, sorry, well, well, I'll show it. Show show it. Show sorry, are you talking to me, Patrick? No, or, show or it. to Mr Khan? I'm talking to Mr Khan. Show him. Go on. Can they well, legally well, be classed well, sorry, as an economic so migrant them, if they come across the channel in a dinghy, show? Um, so first thing, the thing is, I mean, obviously, economic migrant is not really a term known to law or to immigration law. So that's right. something usually right-wing people, usually the media, try to say. So that's not really something I don't know what that means. You either come here because well, you yeah, have family but this, in the but, UK, you do, but this you, is the you thing. Come, you do know what it, you you do know what it means. Permit. Sorry? You do know what it means. What I suspect that you're doing... It's hiding behind legal terminology, which means that you can say these people are not economic migrants because there isn't a term in law that defines what an economic migrant is. Even though I think anyone with a brain would be able to say an economic migrant is probably the type of person who's got seven grand in cash to pay to a people smuggler to get on a boat to come to Britain with the purpose of getting a job and reaping the benefits of a better economic situation. Show it. So firstly, I mean, you asked for my legal opinion, which is why I was saying that's a tabloid term, not a legal term. But secondly, what, what you're asking, I think that disproves the point. That's the whole point. These people have money. They're not coming here for the money. If they were coming here for the money, they would just invest that 7,000 somewhere and start up a business. And 7,000 in the UK is a huge amount in those countries. So, so they're not coming here for the money. That's exactly the point. They have the money. They have the resources. They're professionals, educated, financially well off. They just need to save their lives. OK, Look, both, of you, both of you, thank you very much. We could continue this discussion all evening, but unfortunately we don't have the facilities. Thank you very much. As Conservative, uh, former Conservative MP and current UKIP leader Neil Hamilton and human rights lawyer Shoaib um, Khan. So, who do you agree with, OK? Are economic migrants gaming our lenient asylum system, given these TikTok clips? By the way, can I just say it's fascinating that here at GB News and other news outlets as well, you can just see these TikTok clips online and you can basically find out where some of the people who are claiming to be the people smugglers live.
But it does appear that our police force are not able to do that. I find that odd. Anyway, Kevin on Twitter says, yes, if they are so desperate, where do they get the £7,000 from to pay these smugglers? Cara on email says it's laughable. These poor and desperate people managed to get 7K together to fund criminality. Sean on Twitter says, without a doubt, our asylum system has been too lenient for years. And this is a paradise for economic migrants. Well, now your verdict is in, ladies and gentlemen. We had our Twitter poll, didn't we? And 95% of you agree that economic migrants are gaming our lenient asylum system. 5% of you think that they aren't. Right, OK, well,